missing. We right. miss them, but they're the ones missing out. Amen. Right. So we do miss them. Yeah. I was watching uh, John Hagee on the TV this morning. He was talking about the Sabbath day. Uh, Sabbath day is the Lord's day. Sure. And that's the way I look at it, too. Yeah. Today's the Sabbath day. Have some songs for us, the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus, your name is Son. 
be here in this crowded place tonight. <laughs> For everyone that's missing, there's several angels here, I believe. Amen. Yeah, you're going to have to look into the spirit to see the crowd here tonight. <laughs> and I believe we've got a heavenly host with us tonight. Amen. I, I believe we got Jesus here. And he is, oh, if we got him here, what do we have to worry about? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach from Matthew 24, I believe, tonight, about the parable of the fig tree. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus, there's some things that happened with the fig tree. He was hungry, and he come up on the fig tree, and it wasn't bearing any fruit, so he cursed it. And the next day when they walked by, they seen that fig tree that's different than what I'm going to preach about tonight. But they seen that fig tree dead. And it was because it wasn't bearing any fruit. That should wake up the church to know that God is not limited in the time it takes him to be angry. I, I believe that God can still get angry with what is going on in the world. And for the ones that are not bearing fruit, that is a warning to them. If, if God walks by and he sees this going on, no fruit in the person's life, that's a dangerous situation to be in. That lets us know that there is a place that we can get away from God that he can cut us off. And there's no way to ever come back. So it is serious tonight, this uh, walk of, uh, that we've got with God. It's so serious. He wants us to bear fruit. And our fruit is to bear the fruit that the Word of God says we need to bear. The first, the most important one of all is the fruit of love. That we love one another. And that uh, I believe that we love one another enough that we want to see sinners saved. Mm -hmm. I, I love sinners tonight. I, I love them with all my heart because they've got a soul. But I, I pray for things that happened back when I was, when my dad passed away. I pray, Lord, don't hold this to any of their charge because the, there was things that went on that Christians shouldn't have done. Somebody stole my dad's money and I got blamed for it. But God knows who the guilty party was. and But that is not what I'm going to preach on tonight. But uh, Christian people, I'm talking about Christians, can get into a place to where they're tempted. And if, 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 they're, if they don't put their trust in God, they'll fall into that temptation and they'll do things that they shouldn't do. And this here, this says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When it, his branches is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. This is what I want to preach on tonight. We can tell by the way that things are that summer is nigh. Uh, this world is in such a bad shape. Uh, and it's not just sinners. It's a fallen way of the Christian people. And the, the Bible says he will not come back, I believe it's in Thessalonians, unless first there come a great falling away, falling away from the word of truth. Another place says that you, the time will come when you can travel from 
sea to sea, and you won't be able to find the true word of God being preached any place. Uh, I mean, he, uh, Jesus himself, he said, if I didn't shorten the time, there wouldn't be any place left on earth. Do you know, in the last couple weeks, I've had on my phone advertisement of uh, programs that was on explaining why the world is speeding up in its revolutions. If it speeds up, it's going to make the day shorter. Time is going to be shortened. And they say that's what's taking place right now, that the, the earth is speeding up on its revelation. It's turning faster. They say that gravity is being affected by the revelations of the earth, that it's, that it's sped up enough that gravity is being affected by that. We're living in a day when we need to be awake and see it's time for us to put our uh, trust in God and not be like it was in the days of Noah here in Matthew 24. It says they was doing all the things that you get caught up in this world, the worldish thing that goes on. Uh, uh, I, I hope that I'm like Noah was. Uh, uh, I'm a preacher of righteousness. Uh, and if you uh, if you look around and if you are a preacher of righteousness and anybody that believes in the word of God and stands on that, you're standing on what the Bible says. It will vex your righteous soul because of the uncleanness that's going on in the world today. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branches is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. And uh, all we have to do is read any words that you want to read in the Bible, and it'll point to the coming of Jesus Christ. I mean, if, if you don't have to uh, be a genius to be able to look out there in the world and see that we've got an enemy that's working full time, just as hard as he can work to cause Christian people to fall. I mean, there are all kinds of things that's taking place. And in this day and time, some of it is pride and some of it is lust. And there's all kinds of things that's going on that the devil will present to you and make you think, I'd rather to be doing this than to be in church. I mean, that's the deceitfulness of old Satan at work, of making you uh, believe that uh, actually your time can be spent in a more precious way because we're all buying time. That, the, that's the catch to it, we're buying time. And how do you buy that time that is how you're going to be found of when Jesus comes back. That's how you're going to be found is how that you are at that time. In Revelations it says, as a tree, I believe it says, as it stands, so shall it fall. And, and that means the way that you can compare it back to this fig tree, the, the fig tree well, that's the way that the church is right now. The time is at hand when the church should be bearing fruit. I'm talking about everyone. I know we've got this COVID and we've got so many different things and, and we've got the prophecy being fulfilled in this day and time. It's brother against brother, sister against sister. I had someone this last week uh, talking to me about, I believe it was their brother, that their brother was against them. I think I was at Trish's house, my daughter Trish, when this was going on. I said, it is absolutely a sign 
that we're living in the end of time. I've got people in my family that has not spoke to me in years and years. Uh, Friday, I was out there at Clark's, that, and a young man walked up to me, and he said, well, Manuel, how in the world are you doing? And I started talking to him. I said, well, I'm still pastor. I didn't have any idea of who he really was. And uh, I've thought about it since then. Melinda has got a son that helped when Mike passed away. He helped preach uh, Mike's funeral, my nephew Mike. I believe this young man was Melinda's uh, son, my niece Melinda. And, uh, it's a sad thing when you don't even know your relation. Anyway, I invited him to church here. He said, well, I've been thinking about coming down there. I said, well, come and try and see if you like it. I said, that, that's all I can tell you. At the same time, you remember Taylor Blanton that used to come here, my uh, step-granddaughter, I mean, uh, Jerry and Nona, I don't know if they ever actually adopted her, but uh, they done foster care, and she was one of the foster kids. Well, she has uh, grown older into her 30s, and I, I didn't hardly recognize her because she seems like shrunk up inside, and her face has changed, and uh, she, I don't know if she's married, but her boyfriend looks like he's double her age. But they both said they was going to start coming down to this church. I said, well, I hope you do. I mean, that's all I can do. It seems like they walk in, and then they, they for some reason or the other, they walk in. But it's my responsibility to be a big tree that's got figs on it. That there's, in other words, uh, God said, I'm the God of Abraham. We had it in Sunday school. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That means he's the God of life. He said, I am not the God of death, but I am the God of life. He's not the God of a fig tree, any other kind of tree that don't bear fruit. That don't mean that uh, you have to be a, a shouting preacher or anything like that. You can bear the fruits of God by just getting a, in a place by yourself and praying for the conditions of this world. And we need so many prayer warriors uh, out in the world today that is not afraid or ashamed to call on the name of the Lord and not think that you're committing a sin by commanding in the name of Jesus. I, I believe it because Jesus commanded the, the he commanded the devil, uh, the, the ones that was in the swine to come out of or in the lame man and go at the, the lunatic man and go into the swines. Uh, and they asked, uh, uh, he asked if he could go into them to start with for permission. He went in there and he, they, they went in there and they were so terrible that the swines could not put up with the demons that went in into them. So they run down to the ocean real quick and they drowned themselves. Do you want to go to a place tonight where it's going to be full of, uh, of uh, people or uh, beings like that? I'm talking about some God's creation that was created there in heaven that was heavenly beings and because of uh, Lucifer, because of Satan, they chose to follow him and to be cast out of heaven. How dumb do you think that that can be? But in this day and time, we're, we're doing the same thing. Uh, people are so neglected to even honor, to even recognize 
who God is anymore. And instead of getting close to him and letting him work through them, they're backing off from him, backing right out into the ways of the devil. And I, I believe that, that that's the church. I mean, a lot of it is the church. I believe that uh, believing in backsliding is a, a thing of wisdom because you you can't think that I got saved one time and that you start being a murderer and you're going to go to heaven. You can't think that because the Bible says there won't be any murderers going to heaven. I had a man tell me, and I'm not going to argue either way on this, that to commit the suicide, that it was all right, that you could go to heaven and commit suicide. I, the Bible says murder. If you murder yourself, you're guilty of murder. I think there's probably some reasons that sometimes you may get to a place, but I think God is a delivering God. You might get to a place where you think you can't bear the pain anymore and you're going to have to do something. I've been to that place myself. When the, I was going to the medical center before Margaret passed away, they would beg her to let me, have me let them give, give me more pain pills because I was in such pain. I mean, the pain in my body was something I could not bear. And I, I've told her many times, I know you're not supposed to think this way, but I feel like that I'm going to have to do something. And she'd say, don't do it. But you know what? I held out. And finally, the Lord turned that pain off just like somebody turned the switch off. Two nights after Margaret passed away, I was at Dr. David's, and I said, Dr. David, I got something I want to tell you. And I said, all that pain I was in, I said, you know how much pain I was in? He said, yes. I said, uh, two nights after Margaret passed away, I was laying there praying and had my feet up on the couch and laying on the floor, I said, that stopped just like somebody shut a switch off. And uh, I said, what do you think happened, David? And he said, well, let me tell you my theory of it. He said, Margaret was a good cook. And everything you eat, everything she cooked, you eat. And said, the more weight you gain, the more pain the more the pain shows up. I said, well, that could be, but that's not the way I look at it. And uh, uh, I think that God knew I couldn't bear it anymore. I'd already had that pain, and then I lost her. And it was, he said, I'll not allow more to come on you than what you can bear. Amen. And I, I believe there's a that we're living in a time when people are not realizing who God really is, that he's still God in this day and time, even though they hold all kinds of things over our, our head, like they're going to make us do this or do that, and, or if we don't be obedient to it, they're going to take the checks away and social security checks. I'm talking about taking... COVID shots now. They was threatening that. When the government starts threatening like that, that's when I start the battle. That's when I'm more determined that I'm not going to do anything they tell me to do. I mean, and, and I'm not going to go out and recommend that anybody else thinks like I do along that line. But my God is a provider for me. I found out, I found out that I can't out give him. If I give something, I get something in return. As long as I'm not trying to make a racket out of it and do it for my own gain. I found out if I put my trust in God, 
He will take care of me, and I don't have anything to worry about. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things, such as you have need of, they will be added unto you. And he said, Don't take any thought of what you're going to eat or the clothes that you're going to wear, anything like that. He said, Because I'll, I'll take care of you. And I believe that. I, I believe that we've got a personal God. Amen. And I'm going to get around to preaching on the Lord's Prayer again one of these days because he won't need to preach on that. But if we only put God in our life without any doubt at all, there wouldn't be one prayer that he wouldn't answer as long as if we wasn't praying against his will. I mean, that, uh, we don't see prayers answered in this day and time because some people think it's a sin to ask God for your needs. It's not a sin to do that. It's a sin when you're asking him for your wants, uh, if you're asking him for your own gain just to get more then that's a sin. But this uh, parable of this fig tree here shows us how much uh, the world can look at us as Christian people and see what happens at the beginning of summer in our lives. I'm talking about a spiritual summer, like we're in the beginning of the end of time right now, I believe. If you take the Bible and you read and you study the Bible, you're going to find out that a lot of it has been fulfilled and a lot of it has not been fulfilled. But the second coming of Jesus, I believe, can take place almost any time now. There is a controversy over some of the scriptures here in Matthew 24 up here. In the 29th verse, it said, they asked him when he'd come back. He said, immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the towers of heaven shall be shaken. Well, that has not happened yet. I mean, uh, th th this prophecy has got to be fulfilled. And then it says, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, for they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send, this is where he, he comes and he reaps the world. Said, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. I mean, that gives you a good idea of when he's going to come back. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. And that's what I stand on. I don't mean that to say that you can tell the day or the hour. You can't tell the day or the hour. But you know when the sun is darkened, when the sun don't shine, the moon is darkened, the stars of heaven fall, and the heavens and the, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We're going to know when that happens. What is that? It may be a great atomic war. I mean, that may be what will blot out the sun and the moon. And it may, that may be what shakes the heavens and the earth. I don't know. It may be God himself that's going to do some things like has never been done in heaven before. But it is going to happen, and we're going to see that. And it's going to be the sign of his coming when it takes place. I guess I've about preached enough tonight. I'll read another scripture or two here. 
says, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. I believe that that's what it is right now. I believe Jesus, I believe if you could see a clock that uh, telling you the time that we've got left, I believe it would be right at the midnight hour. I believe the minute hand would be right at the midnight hour. And it says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, there's a misleading in that talking about this generation that they think it was back. I mean, this is the ones that don't believe like I do. Think that he was talking about back in the days when this prophecy was being written, but it's not. This generation is this generation that he's talking about right here and now that this generation will not pass until all these things be fulfilled. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So that, that tells us that, I mean, we, we've got enough of a hint there to let us know to be ready. Well, if I would read on it, tell us what's going to take place there as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in, our, in the coming of the Son of Man. And you can go by the wickedness of the world that time is running out. That if there ever was a great falling away from church, it's now. And I remember a time when the preacher could get up and preach about hellfire and brimstone and sinners would come running even from outside and fall at the altar and cry out to God because people still had the fear of God with them. Nowadays, they don't fear God anymore. But this generation that's coming up now, they don't even know who God is. They don't know the fear. My, my grandchildren, they, they don't know the fear of God. Some of them don't. Some of them do. But many of them are like heathens. They, they don't know to fear God. They don't know that there's going to be a judgment day because they're never in church to hear and to know. And some of them have been. I've had a lot of them that come to this church here that are living wicked in this day and time that would be lost. I mean, that's all you could say about them. They would be lost if the Lord come back. So we need to pray. We've got a lot to pray about. And I'm going to close there, but we need to start remembering through the week, praying to get the burden for the lost. It, what a sad thing. I've got to think about my dad and mom and my brothers and all of them thinking, oh, I hope that none of them was lost. I, I, I think my dad's been dead, uh, died in 68, 40, 42, 22. That'd be 64 years he's been dead. No, it'd be 32, 22, I guess. It'd be 54 years he's been dead. How sad that would be if he missed heaven and then been in hell all this time. I mean, he was a Christian. I believe he, he went to heaven. But I just, I was thinking about that last week. Some of my relations wasn't Christians when they died. I had uncles and I had my brother that was in the Navy. He, he drank all the time. One of the people that I thought the very most of when he was alive. Because me and him were close and we we done a lot of things together. He he liked for me to do his racing for him. 
they get out and get a drink and they come get me to drive these cars. And naturally, I was young and that, that thrilled me. I, I wanted to be there to beat whoever it was that he was wanting to drag the race with. So, I mean, that was a worldly thing. But through things like that, me and him really become close. We hung out in the taverns, nightclubs, and stuff like that. And we went to stock car races. We was after the same thing. And he said, me and my little brother, he called me his little brother, he said, we're the black sheep of the family. And we was back then, we was the black sheep of the family. But all that time, God was dealing with me to get saved and to live right. After I got saved, I started standing up and testifying, started church in the basement. My brother would come to me and he'd say, you're a real man because I chose the ways of God. I mean, yeah. I've got that to think of, and he died in his sleep. He hadn't drunk anything three weeks before he passed away. I hope, he told me, he said, if I die, don't worry about me, because I always pray. But can you take God for granted like that? I wouldn't want to. I hope he prayed seriously and repented, and God touched him while he was ready to go. So, it's serious tonight. <laughs>